When starting a new research project, often the first thing you need to do is find out what existing data sets already exist that can help you answer your question. In this video, we'll look at various different ways you can use the eAtlas to find that existing data. The normal research workflow typically starts with going out and collecting data in the field, performing some analysis on that data to create a nice prepared data set that can be published along with reports and papers. However, increasingly these days, we're doing meta-analysis or we're doing analysis where we're bringing together multiple existing data sets to, to perform a research on that existing data. And this is where the eAtlas can really help because its primary role is to capture the existing data that has been prepared and make it available for access for future research. So on the eAtlas, you'll find, for example, accessible data that can be downloaded and it's associated documentation that can tell you about that data, along with visualizations of the data to allow you to quickly assess whether the data is relevant for your question. And also there are photos and articles that can be used to provide additional context around the research. The Atlas predominantly focuses on the tropical marine areas of Australia, but it also covers a lot of coastal research um, as this can often impact the marine environment. The primary focus of the eAtlas is on research project data. And that means that each of the data sets that are produced answer either a particular question or a particular issue in a particular location. We find that we get a lot of spatial data sets because if you're trying to understand the environment, there's a lot of spatial aspects to that data. There's also a lot of non-spatial data sets that relate to laboratory work and time series measurements. We also have a lot of reference data which provides context around individual research data because it sets the scene of where that information fits in with the environment. We also have an increasing sized catalogue of analysis code that is associated with research projects and this will probably expand in the future. In this section, we'll look at using the eAtlas to answer a particular set of questions, an example research question. And through that process, we'll discover various different ways that you can find data and some of the limitations of the various aspects of the eAtlas that help you know where to go if you get stuck. So the eAtlas itself is a website that has access to data sets and articles. On the front page, it lists the latest ones and provides a set of examples of what type of content you will find in the Atlas. If you're trying to answer a particular question, you're probably gonna go almost immediately to using the search. In this particular demonstration, we're gonna use an example where what I'm interested in is understanding where seagrass exists around Lizard Island in North Queensland. So I'm gonna start off with searching for Lizard Island and see what type of content that I get. When you do a general search on the website, it'll search through all the content that it collates, which includes the metadata records in the eAtlas catalog, along with images, so photos, um, and articles, and you might find the occasional video that's been referenced in here. If I search more specifically for Lizard Island and seagrass, I'll find that we get a few images um, and one overview. But in our case, we're actually most interested in data sets. So this is no good. We can use the advanced search here to restrict what results we get to just the metadata records. Now, if we search with this, obviously it's too restrictive and we're not getting any results. And the reason is that this is not finding any metadata records that have the words Lizard Island in it and seagrass. This doesn't mean that there isn't any coverage, it's just that those words aren't listed in those metadata records. 
And if we search just for seagrass, we'll see that, in fact, there are lots of records associated with seagrass that probably do have coverage. If we look at one of these records, we can see that it shows details of that record, usually a bit of a preview of the data set, and um, also more information about it. You can also view the full metadata record in the metadata geo network itself, which displays the same information. The other thing I want to show you is that if you are wanting to get to the metadata system directly, you can use the advanced metadata search. And that'll take you through to the search page of the metadata system. In here, you can do more advanced searching. So we, again, we can search for seagrass, and this will list pretty much the same records as we saw on the website. But what we can also do is a spatial search using this map. So we can scroll the map using the mouse, use the scroll wheel to zoom in, and then we can find Lizard Island where we're interested and draw an extent. And what that will do is limit the search results to those which have a match at that location. So we can look through these to see what's going to be relevant to answer a question. Here we've got a nice data set, but we can see that it's actually a little bit old. This particular data set is a predicted distribution. In my case, I'm interested in actual observations around Lizard Island, so this is not suitable. Here we can see uh, a quite good candidate seagrass data set here, covers up to quite recently. So if we have a look at this, we can see there's a lot of detail on what the data set is, how it was created, etc. And we can see a preview image of the data. Here we can see there's information around Lizard Island, which is a good start, but we can't see any detail. What we really need is some sort of map that we can zoom into. If we scroll down to the bottom, as we scroll through the metadata record, you can see there's details about each of the attributes. And all of this information is really important if we start trying to use that data in an analysis. But just to get started, we want to have a bit of a preview. The downloads and links section is quite important. It shows you things like a link to where the project information is on the NESP website. So if we have a look there, you'll see that there's a page for each project, and here you'll find things like the final reports, um, which will provide additional information around the data set. You'll also find a link to the page that represents this project on the eAtlas, and here you can find associated images and videos, and also the data sets that came out of that project. You can find the data download. So this is if you actually decide that you want this data in your own analysis, you can download it. And finally, probably um, what we're interested in at the moment is an interactive map of this data set so we can directly have a look in on Lizard Island. Now, if we zoom in on the map, then what we can see is actually the green dots represent observations where seagrass was present and the white dots represent where it was absent. So now we can actually see the distribution of seagrass around Lizard Island, and we've kind of answered our original question. If we wanted to use this data in our own analysis, we would then download that data and we could bring it into various GIS applications or process it in some programming language. In this section, we're going to talk a little bit more about some of the features within the mapping system that can help you find a broader range of data sets. So let's imagine you've started off with a metadata record and you've come through to the mapping system and you can see a particular data set. And you're curious as to see whether there's any other similar data sets within the mapping system. Now, when you add a layer in the mapping system, you can get these overlay layers, which is the list of, or it's a tree, which represents the catalog of all the layers. Now, this includes the eAtlas layers, which generally correspond to the metadata records in the eAtlas, but it also includes layers from many other organizations. The mapping system in the eAtlas has around 7,000 layers, whereas the metadata records in the eAtlas has only around 
380. So it is a bigger catalog, um, but it means that the layers that you find from other organizations will have a little bit more variability in being able to download the data. Now, one thing I'd like to highlight is that if you've got a particular layer already loaded, it shows up in yellow so that we can find out where it is in this particular tree. So we can see that within the eAtlas, this particular seagrass layer exists within the biota category. And within the biota category, it exists within this particular folder. And so that's one way of finding similar layers. And here we can see that there are two data sets. One is an older version of this 2018 data set. We can also see that there's a few other data sets that might be of interest to us. So we've got seagrass as a coastal model, for example. Another thing to point out is that all the data sets that are within the eAtlas have a code that at the start which indicates their general extent. So GBR represents data sets that pretty much cover most of the Great Barrier Reef. Coral Sea is fairly obviously the Coral Sea. Um, AU for those that cover the whole of Australia. Queensland are generally ones which are more coastal along the Queensland coast. TS for Torres Strait, WT for wet tropics. Yep. So that can help sort of quickly tell whether a data set is in an area that you might be interested in. Now, for the other data sets that are here, you can just browse through them and find out what they contain, um, or you can use the search itself. So here I've done a search for temperature, um, and here you'll find records that are in the eAtlas. Often this code, you know, seeing these codes indicates that it's coming from the eAtlas. A lot of other servers don't use that convention. So we can see here that we've got another data set, time series for temperature, and we can get the metadata here to find out more information. If we add this data set, um, we might be thinking, well, where is this data? So for this, we can see its description, but under options, you can do locate, and that will zoom to the extent of that data set. So we can see that this data is actually national um, and it has a whole bunch of points around Australia. If you click on them, generally you'll get some information which corresponds to the data in the data set itself. If you go to the description and go to the bottom, you'll find generally a point of truth. Um, and then from there, you can go to the actual metadata itself. And here you'll find various ways of actually downloading that data. So here it seems to be available through NetCDF as threads, or you can get it through the AODN portal. So there's some of the different ways that you can find data using the eAtlas. Generally, you'll find that you generally start with searching the website because that provides access to images and other various forms of content. And then you can move up to the metadata search and that provides consistent access to research data from pretty much all the NESP and NERP research that's um, marine and coastal. And then you can progress up to using the searching within the mapping system. The mapping system obviously provides more layers to be discovered, but generally it's not as powerful in terms of being able to filter down to the records that you're actually interested in. So if you have any questions uh, about using the eAtlas or you're having trouble finding a particular data set, feel free to contact the eAtlas team. We generally have a pretty good idea of what data is available and um, we can help you find data for your projects.